so I think we're going to get started. Hi everyone, thank you so much for coming. My name is Anna Farmashevska, I'm, I'm the Vice President of Women in Business. And you are here uh, for the uh, breakout session called Jimmy 2 or not. So Jimmy 2, of course, is about financial advice after you graduate from college and whether you should buy those expensive Jimmy 2 shoes uh, the first, when you receive your first paycheck or should you just wait a little bit. And right here we have um, Alice Lindenauer, right? And um, she's the leader of SEI's Workforce Development Unit. And we have Sue Scott, who is a Solutions Manager within SEI's Advisor Network. So without further ado, ladies, please take over and tell us whether we should spend or not. OK, thank, thank you. you. Yes, you should. <laughs> On only things that SEI sells. Yeah. Well, welcome, everybody. She was very interesting, wasn't she? I'm going to kick one of those books home to my daughters. I think they would appreciate it. having the same thought. Although, what did we say? I said, you look beautiful in your, your dress. You're like, no, I don't. <laughs> so in the back of them is Rupa Rupa Aurelia. Hi. Would you like to stand up? Rupa Hi. is um, our HR manager from SEI's London office, and she's in town working with us. So we brought her along. Um, so what we wanted to do, it's not great. It's OK. Yeah, why are you not so exactly lined up? Why are you exactly lined up? I think it's you. You have a bit of karma. Maybe. Um, Let's just try the next slide. Let's try the next slide. Okay. Where are you going to get me? Okay. Well, here. We're going to get you. So I'm going to introduce everybody. So this is, this is Sue. Sue Scott works in the advisor network. But she also has a second type of job. Sue is a financial coach. With the financial freedom, is that what it's called? Uh, financial peace. Financial peace. Peace, freedom, and all same that. Same thing. It's the same. Um, all the same place. So when we were invited to come here and speak to you, I thought Sue would be great. And she speaks to all kinds of people, all stages of life, about financial planning. And I asked Sue, what's the one thing you would, you would tell uh, people graduating from college? And she said, the one thing I would say is, you can have anything you want. You just can't have everything you want. So I thought that was very good. I'm Alice. Um, and I thought, what would be the one thing I was saying? And I just came from a party. You know The Secret? Did you guys like ever hear that book, The Secret? Yeah, Oprah's book, The Secret? Well, um, my friends are really into The Secret. They're like, The Secret Party. And I thought, this is like a bunch of crap. The only secret is, is that you have to work for everything. Right? Like if you just sit there and wait for the world to come to you and things to happen for you, offer yourself up to the universe, you'll be waiting a long time. So uh, my, my one word of advice to you is uh, don't wait for things to happen. Start to make the right choices and the right decisions so that you have options and then you're in control. So that was my first little word of advice. So what we wanted to do is ask you some very quickly, and this is very participative, so you guys really have to participate. Yes, first question. What do you think we should talk about? In the session today. You have to talk, guys, or I'm going to call on you. It's really bad. Excuse me, I'll try to She's going to start. She's going to tap shoulders. What should we talk about? What would, what, what, what would you what would you, what do you think we should talk about? Just one person. I'm going to stand here. And I'm getting very close what to this you, marker. When, and it's when not you walked in situation. the room, what did you think we were going to talk about? Financial planning after college. Okay. Financial planning after college. So we'll see. Post college. Financial planning. Ruben, that would be post uni financial planning. Yeah. In, your, in your special English language planning. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. Uh, what do you wish we would talk about? What's like the thing like you always wanted to talk about but you didn't know who would talk about? Yeah. Anything? What do, you, what, what do you wish we'd talk about? No? Putting you guys in the spot? Okay. okay. All right. Well, if you if you come up with something that we're not yeah. talking about, please raise your hand and say, "I really wish you wouldn't." What do you really not want us to talk about? What do you hope we don't talk about? You would like us not to berate and yell at you, I would think, right? Yes. Tell us you don't want us to tell us you're doing everything wrong and your ideas are crazy. I would imagine. Right. That didn't go over too well. Next time we do this, we'll have to mix this up. Yeah. Um, so we want to get an idea of who's in the room today, okay? Oh, so you're doing this. I'm going to see the little lesson on the bottom. That's yours. Oh, was that what that yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You're so, you're so together. So together. Okay. Year. How many freshmen? Sophomores? Juniors? Seniors? Ooh, we got them all canned. That's great. <laughs> That's great. Okay. Uh, how many people live in a dorm? How many people live in an apartment? Or some someone's there. Anybody living at home? Um, not at home. In a home. <laughs> oh, in a home? That's kind of the same as an apartment. Apartment, home, you know, not. Yeah. Yeah. You're paying rent, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So nobody at home other than that. Anybody working while they're going to school? 
Yeah. I have a job on campus. Good. And um, you work as well? Um, yeah, I'm looking at a retail store. Great. And what are we selling? Clothing. Of course. How much of your uh, salary actually comes home? Are we selling Jimmy Choo? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, paying tuition. How many people are paying outright? Gee, that's a they surprise. You know what that means. Paying cash. You walked in the front door and said, here's my 45, 50, whatever it is, thousand dollars. Nobody. Gee, no surprise there. How many people are, have scholarships or grants? Either one. Okay. How many people are getting mom and dad to pay? How many people are paying for themselves completely? Anybody doing a mishmash of all of those? A little bit of everything? All right. So as we kind of suspect that we got people all over the place. Uh, Money. Where's your money? Anybody have any money? Mm -hmm. Under the mattress, in a checking account, savings account, investments? Trust funds. Trust funds, <laughs> yeah. How many people have a checking account? How many people balance their checkbooks? How many people have a savings account with money in it? <laughs> How many people have a savings account you can't get to? Okay. Uh, money out. Anybody have uh, student loans? Not yet. And not, don't know student loans on the horizon. I mean, not pay, not you're paying for, but you're going to have to pay for. No, good. Anybody have credit cards? Anybody have credit cards with bills with money on them that you owe? That's called debt. <laughs> no. Nobody. Now really want to confess if you do. Uh, spending time was today, and I totally forgot what, I, what I meant by that. Uh, what comes next after college? Any thoughts? Are we going to go get a job? We're going to go back to school. Job? Anybody want to keep going to school? Graduate school? Law school? Law school? Law school? Graduate school. What? Graduate school. Oh, graduate school. Okay. In? Do you know? No idea. No idea. Okay. Alice is with Oh, you. okay. Oh, okay. So I found this in a magazine, one of my daughter's magazines, like Seventeen magazine or something like that. I thought it was brilliant. I ripped it out months ago. I loved it. Smart move, money move number one is to choose your job carefully. And it was really interesting because the keynote speaker was actually talking about this. She said the first job she took, she hated. What and why did she hate it? She hated it because she really didn't want to do that, but it paid really well. So one of the things that researchers found is that if you have an idea of what you want your career to be, Take a job in your career. And I know that sounds like, duh, of course I'm going to do that. But the reality is you might choose a career that doesn't pay very well. So you decide, you know, the first job I'm going to take, even if I don't want to really do that or love it, I'm going to take it because it pays well. But what studies find is that that's a really <coughs> bad money choice. It's a really bad decision to make. Because it really, eventually you won't be happy. She was miserable. She cried every day. And um, it'll delay your real career. So three, four years in a miserable job, you decide you want to be a social worker, you're back to point zero, right? And you'll just be unhappy. So one of the great smart money moves is to choose that first job really, really carefully. Don't go for the money. It's my favorite one, because I have two daughters as well. Do not move in with your parents. So you're probably thinking, well, you know, I spoke to my mom. She said, look, that first job, you know, I'll help you save money so that maybe you can buy a condo or, you know, get a good start, you put some money away. Um, and that sounds great, but studies have shown that when people graduating college move into their parents, they don't save any money at all. And you're saying, why? Why? Because, because you're going to spend all your money on things that involve being outside of your parents' home. You're going to go on vacations. You're going to buy a car. You, you, you know, you get flush with cash with your first job, and, and you know, you spend it. So you end up not saving any money. So one of the things people say is, don't move in with your parents. Move in with some friends. If it's three people to a two-bedroom apartment or something like that, it's better than moving in with your parents because you probably won't save money. Don't buy a new car. That's another thing people say. I'm going to graduate from college. I'm going to get rid of this piece of crap I have that was my brother's and my older brother's before his and my grandfather's before his, and I'm going to buy a shiny, beautiful new car. A lot of people do that. It's a big mistake. And actually, Sue will tell you what a very large car payment will do to your ability to get a mortgage a few years down the road, right? Um, but uh, what, what the advice is, is just if you, if you can't stick with the car that you have, then just buy a really nice used car. There's um, some very good pre-owned cars, and you won't have the expense that you would with a new car. Get in the budget habit. We're going to talk a little bit about that later as well. Um, and Sue's going to do some great um, examples of that. And the last one is, what's coming up? Oh, oh, 
Oh, so what's going on? Sticky keys? What the heck is that? Okay. There ah, you go. educate yourself about personal finance. And that's really you starting by coming here today, which is fantastic. And when you had to learn math, when you had to learn history, what'd you do? You took a class, you bought some books, you tested yourself. So what we're here to tell you to do today is to educate yourself. Get prepared for that first year at college. There's a lot of ways to do that. And there's some really good books out there. We actually brought a couple of these books to share with you. We're going to do a little raffle at the end. But a couple of them that I love. I love this. See this brown book? This is this second book here. This is a great book. It's a great gift to buy your friends who are graduating. It's called The Quarter Life Crisis. And it is a book really about what it's like to be in your early 20s. So I mean, we always focus on the midlife crisis. I'm sure your parents are all whining and complaining about that, as I am. But this is a very interesting book called The Quarter Life Crisis. And it is, it's a great read. Um, it's a great thing to read and talk to your friends about. The other one that we love, and we actually give these books to our college hires. Have any, has anyone ever heard of SEI? Any of the seniors, any uh, business seniors? Business, did you, did you go to our open, our? Uh... No, I haven't. Okay, well we, we, we recruit heavily at Villanova. But anyway, part of our associates programs, we do give away this book. It is the Everything After College book. We call this disorientation, mm -hmm. to disorient you. Like people say, you go, to, you go to your new job, you get oriented, we disorient you. It's more important that you stop acting like you're in college and then you start acting like you're working. So that's part of one of the things that we do. So get some books. Sue, you were on. Should I click while you talk? That would be great. OK. That would be great. Um, OK, so what we want to talk about is, and you can click away, okay. is so where are you spending your money today? Just shout out. Where do you spend your money today? At the bookstore, the Villanova bookstore. Yeah. Ouch. Barnes and Noble. Anybody get sucked into Barnes and Noble? Get a latte and a book. Mm -hmm. Where else? Clothes store. Uh huh. Take that paycheck. You get a discount, don't you? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Where else? Food. Food. Where else? Guys, don't go out. Every Friday, Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! This is this is not Where? Georgetown or University of Delaware. So. Sorry. Bars. Bars. And, oh, and Route 21? I said if you're 21. Oh, if you're 21. So, so oh. this isn't Georgetown and University of Delaware. They study here. It's they different do. than our day. <laughs> Come on in. Sorry. Sorry. I'm going to click away. Okay, click away. So, um, oh, well, and you can't, you can't see our, yeah, right. our graphic here, but that's okay. Uh, one other quick question before we keep going on um, where you're going to spend your money. I would love to know how many of you have saved up for college. Yeah. Anybody want to raise their hand? Yeah. 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 That you'll make when you graduate. If you got a job as soon as you got out of Villanova, and you have, is everybody in your business school? Okay, you got a business degree, I got a Villanova diploma, both high ticket items. How much money do you think you'll make? 60 New York City. 60? $60,000? Anybody else? 30 to 40. Sorry? 30 to 40. 50? What else? More? Going, 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 Sachs, going. Golden Sachs and Manhattan, anybody? Uh, okay, so some of the things you're going to have to pay for, which you can't see on the side there. You need a place to live, right? You need a place to get to job, to from place to live. You need tacky stuff. What's that mean? Do we even tell anybody? Please silence your cell phones, right? Can't go to the movies without being told to silence your cell phone. Your iPod, your Blackberry, name one, okay? Um, utilities. If we turned off the lights, this wouldn't be very much fun, right? And if no one wants to have Pico show up at your door and turn your lights off. Um, insurance. What do you need insurance for? Apartment. Anybody in here think about insurance today? Apartment, right. Right? Okay. What do you need? What kind of insurance do you need for your apartment? Renter's insurance. Renter's insurance. Anybody, does everybody know what renter's insurance is? Does anybody not know what renter's insurance is? And you're allowed to not know. Renter's insurance is, your, when, you have, when you own a home, you get homeowner's insurance, and that covers your house and everything in it. Um, if you don't own a house and you rent an apartment or you live in a dorm, if you live in a dorm, you might be covered by your parents if you're still connected to your parents. But if you rent an apartment and the apartment building burns down, what do you get? Um, I had a very nice man that we helped once who lived in an apartment. He went to Florida, and you don't have to be just a recent college graduate. He went to Florida to see his daughter and grandchild came home to nothing because the whole building burnt down and everything he owned was in that uh, building. And happen? he had no insurance. No, it was mm -hmm. here somewhere. So do not think that you can get by without renter's insurance because I don't have that much stuff. Trust me, you have way more than you think you do. Um, food, you all said that was a good thing. You all said food pretty on the top of the list because we do need to eat. 
entertainment, you're kind of hesitant to say that, but I know you guys are out. Uh, medical and dental, if you're on your parent right now, you can stay on, thank you, Mr. Obama, you can stay on your parents' insurance until you're 26 if they let you, uh, but you still have to pay for those doctors and dentist bills, even if you don't have to pay for the insurance. Um, let's, and the other things you can't see here are weekends, because I'm sure you're all going to go away for the weekends because I see SCI in the, summer, in the summertime. At least the place clears out and everybody's going to the shore. Um, vacations, here's a surprise. If you vacation with your parents, it's not free. Um, and they probably might stop paying for you after you graduate from college. Um, gifts become a really big thing, especially once you're out of college, because what starts happening? Weddings, weddings, showers, babies, all that stuff. And, and weddings aren't cheap, trust me. I mean, I can't tell you how many of our associates I've heard going, I have another wedding, I need a dress, I have to get there, I have to have a hotel, I need a shower gift, I need a, oh, and my boyfriend's coming, and he's complaining, isn't it? You know, we have to go do something else, so. And you can say no to be a, if you're asked to be a bridesmaid. You really can. Now, this is, a bridesmaid will put you in the hole for at least $1,000, right? Yeah, good. Because it's, this, you have to do the shower, you have to buy the dress, you have to give a good gift. Um, of course, and then there's, you have to take the bride out before. Right. The, what is it, a hen party back there? What do we call it? Yeah, the hand party. In, in the UK, it's a hand party. Okay, but there's all kinds of things. Those are all pretty kind of you know intuitive. There's all kinds of things you probably don't or think about that you have to pay. One, which is loans. And most people going to college today graduate with some kind of student loan, whether it's big or it's small. Um, but a lot of college graduates walk out the door with eighty to one hundred thousand dollars of college of student loan debt. That's a really big scary number. Uh, credit card payments, uh, average college student today, actually this is 2008 number, so I'm sure it's worse today, is over $4,000 in credit card debt, and they haven't even started working yet. Um, close. At what percent would they be paying off that debt, sir? So? Uh, today it's about 14.5% is average credit card rate. Um, so that, you know, all those bonus points and everything, you're not going to get that bit. It's, it's not worth it, trust me. Um, Clothes. So, oh, I graduated from school. I'm gonna get a new job. I gotta have new clothes, don't I? Oh, I gotta, I gotta have good clothes. I gotta have really good clothes because I want to go work in the corporate world. So I gotta wear really expensive clothes. So I gotta take my first paycheck and go to Neiman Marcus. Um, well, can I tell? Can I inject a, interject a quick story yeah, about sure. So um, after I finished college, my mother was so proud of me. I, I, I flew up back up to New York from Washington, and um, she said, "Let's go shopping. I'm, I want to take you shopping." I'm like. Oh, and um, it was great, it was really great. And we went to a very nice store in New York that my mother used to buy clothes at. And she's picking up, well this is the day when we wore suits with the matching, everything was matching. And um, she said, well you need five suits, you know, get six or seven blouses, you know, pick out some belts, and, you know, all kinds of stuff. Oh, this is great. So I tried to I just felt so fantastic. And when we were ready to pay, she goes, well, you know, let's go in line to pay. And I got into line and she left. And she left the whole ride home. She said, I've been waiting to do that. 21 years. I need to meet your mother. I, I thought she was going to pay. She did not pay. I need to meet your so mother. Be, so watch your mothers, because this is something that we all do. I'm planning on doing it, too. Yeah, that would be a, a, Could you call me so I can hide out in the store when you do that? I would love to it's do very that. very satisfying. Yeah. Um, salon treatments, I'll say there's a safe bet that most of the women in this room get their hair done, might do their nails, might get their toenails done. Uh, we won't talk about what it costs to have waxing or any of that other extra stuff. Okay. Uh, the gym, that's like the, you know, that's the new uh, outing of choice. Got to go to the gym. It's where you meet guys. Got to be in shape that whole bit. Gym's usually not free. Might be here. Do you have a gym here? Mm -hmm. Everybody here go to the gym here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sort of kind of. That's good. That's good. Um, household items, we always forget about that stuff, whether it's I have a new apartment, so I need a microwave. You might need a refrigerator. I need pots and pans. I All that stuff <coughs> that we kind of take for granted. Uh, visits home, mom and dad do kind of require that you show up occasionally. Um, and you won't get homesick, um, I hope. Uh, emergencies, we always forget about emergencies and it's when we don't plan for them is when they come. Uh, charitable giving, you're going to a good Catholic university so I hope you're all uh, learning that it is better to give than to receive and I will tell you from personal experience that the more you give away, the more you will get back and that is in everything that you do, including your money. So I encourage each and every one of you, I don't care what it is, but you include charitable giving of some kind in whatever budget and activities that you do. Um, blow money is one of my favorites. Blow money is, anyone want to guess what blow money is? I don't think we should guess that. <laughs> <laughs> blow money is what we call money that you blow. So you have a, so you're all business majors, you're gonna do a perfect budget, right? You're gonna sit down, you're gonna work it all out, and then what happens? The very first time I did a real budget um, 
and I had everything all lined up, and maybe about a week later, the dog's leash broke. And I went, I don't have a line item for the dog. I don't have a line item for a dog leash. Where does that come from? All that kind of stuff that you, one, you don't count on, or two, you all need to have money in your pocket, and it just doesn't matter. You don't track it, you don't care where it goes. That's my, that's my play money. If you have leftovers, you can hold over until next week, and you can save your blow money and do something really fun, or you can just blow it. That's kind of the whole point. So you can be irresponsible with some amount of your money. The big thing you need to remember is you need to be responsible with most of it. If you're responsible with most of it, then the rest of it takes care of itself and you can be irresponsible with a little. But if you're responsible with all of it, you won't have any. And then sad to say that's a fact of life. So we're going to actually do a little exercise here. Um, and we're savings. Not, You've got savings. Oh, savings. I forgot savings. The savings rate in this country is abominable. And when the world blew up a couple of years ago, at that time, we had a negative savings rate in the United States. We spent more money than we made and saved nothing, uh, which is why we have so many people whose homes are in foreclosure, whose homes are falling apart, uh, people who don't have jobs, who have no way to support themselves because they have no savings. Um, it is a necessity. You might think it sounds nice, but it's a necessity. You think you might have a, a parachute with mom and dad, but if mom and dad don't are any good with money. Don't count on them to know this either. I've had 80-year-old people in my, in my classes who are working two jobs because they didn't get this. So if you guys figure this out now, I guarantee you can all become millionaires. But you need to. This is, this is what a budget is, and this is what we're gonna talk about. A budget is telling your money where to go instead of wondering where it went. And if you don't tell your money where to go at the end of every week or every month, you're gonna scratch your head going, where's all my money? I got my paycheck. I don't have any money, it's all gone, it's gone. For most people, it's gone before they've even, I mean, they're spending, they've already spent it and I'm using my paycheck to pay off my debts and now I'm always backwards. So we're gonna play a little game, we're gonna walk through. So what does, hand up what does it this? cost? Well, I have it here, but I might wanna not, you wanna walk okay. through it first. Okay. So, but really fast before I do that, because we didn't all come in the same way, so I want you to play my game really quick. So here's my game, you all have an index card. I have four things up here and I want you to guess how much did I pay for them? I did not want to bring my furniture, so I just brought a picture. Okay, this is a solid cherry Bombay. Bombay's a fancy store, if you don't know it. Um, they call them a sofa table. It's in my hallway, but they call them a sofa table. So you need to guess how much I paid for that. We're playing the prices right. Does everybody still watch the prices right? right? You're writing it on what? Yes, one of your index cards is this. Okay? Our next item, now I really do feel like being away. This is a Don Castridge wool jacket, standard classic double breasted navy blue. Uh, Don Castor, if you don't know, is a very high-end women's clothing line. Like, they don't even put prices on anything, and they do, they come to your house and, and dress you. Okay, so this is a classic, I'm sorry, you get the dog here with the two legs, rushing out the door this morning and had extra company. Um, this is a classic go-to-work jacket, right? So we all think we need one of these, and this is Don Castor, so it's a good one. So how much do you think that costs? Leather pants. Not much more to be said, they're leather pants. Yes, they're 100% leather. They're not pleather or leather wrap or anything. So. And lastly, is this is a Galway crystal champagne flute. Galway is the sister company to Waterford. So think Waterford and step sideways a half an inch. Okay? Okay. So we'll come back to that. All right. So what do you need to Oh, let's start out with, we start out with um, somebody back here. We were guessing how much money are we gonna, we're going to make. All right. Uh, I actually, in preparing for this, I did, um, to make sure my numbers were current, I went out and I surveyed a whole bunch of young 20-somethings to find out what they were making and what they were spending so that I could give you accurate numbers about if you left today, what it would cost you to go live on your own. Okay? So, based on that, $35,000 is an accurate figure to expect to make when you graduate from college. Now, one of the people that I talked to said that she had friends who were accounting majors and friends who were engineers. Engineers and accounting majors both had higher expectations and actually did make a little more money. Um, sadly, the business majors made less because right now the world is what the world is. And so the reason I'm telling you all this is not to depress you, is to set your expectations to Alice's point, you need to work. Life is not gonna just come to you. So, I had lunch today with a guy who talked his way into the associate program. Which one was that? Zach. Uh, so, uh, uh, well, he was charming. Yes, and he's very good, and he's very good, but he, he wasn't part of recruiting or anything. He went to a school, he went to Kutztown. We don't recruit at Kutztown. No, we don't. No, so 
Uh, very unusual. So let's just start quickly. If you're making $35,000 a year, that comes out to uh, once a month you, you make $2,916. However, you don't get $2,900, do you? No. We have to take out federal taxes, Social Security, Medicare, state taxes, blah, 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 blah. So you actually get $2,303 a month. That's what you get to start with. Okay, so now we need a place to live, right? So how much do you think it's gonna cost you if you get your own apartment? One bedroom apartment, nothing fancy, and you're, still, you're staying around here. These are all numbers based on where, we're, where we are right this minute. 1,200. Anybody else? 700. Anybody want to vote? Who's right, who's wrong? Okay, so we're going to say over here we have a one bedroom apartment just by yourself. You can get one in Wayne for 900 bucks. Now, what if you're smart? What do you do if you're smart? Huh? You get a roommate, right? Most people don't want to share a room with a roommate, right? So had enough of that. So over here we're going to have a two bedroom townhouse. All right, lots of townhouses around here. So how much do you think townhouse costs you? Sorry? 1500 1500 Anybody else? Good guess. I went for 1200 so that's 600 a piece. Now, I have to start out by telling you I'm as thrifty as they come. So I'm not giving you high-end numbers. So you can always spend more than this. All right? All right. What do you need if you have an apartment? What things in the apartment do you need to pay for? Appliances. In an apartment, hopefully you don't have to pay for appliances, but you might. Some apartments do not come with refrigerators or microwaves. So we're going to put that down here as things we need to remember. We might need appliances. OK, what else? Furniture. OK, I'm going to put that down here because that's kind of an unknown, but we don't want to forget it. What do you have to pay every month? Utilities. Utilities. So we need to pay gas and electric. OK, what do you think gas and electric costs for a one bedroom apartment? Summer or? Well, we're just talking as in a general, you know, we're going to say you've done the budget plan with PICO and you pay the same thing every month. 40. 40. Anybody else? 70. You guys are pretty, oh, you guys are pretty good. One bedroom apartment is about 60 bucks. Now, what if you're in a townhouse? Hmm? 100. So you think it's 100? So it would be $50 a piece because you're splitting it, right? Because over here we're splitting it. So is that what you're saying? That's actually incorrect, because you're actually going to spend more because you're paying for a townhouse. Now, if you had a two-bedroom apartment, that would be a different story. But if you're in a townhouse, you know, you're thinking, I'm sharing, but don't forget, it's a townhouse. So I got a big townhouse, heat rises, all the heat's going up to the top, right? I have an air, I got to air condition the whole thing. I'm not just air conditioning the apartment. You need to think about that stuff. So. Um, how about water? Anybody in here know that you have to pay for water? Yeah, I mean, you'd be amazed how many people don't know that. Now over here, you're lucky. If you're in an apartment, you probably don't have to pay. Um, but I'll just tell you, you're gonna have to pay, if there were two of you, it'd be 50 bucks. So you're gonna have to pay 25 bucks a piece for water in the townhouse, because the townhouse doesn't, you're gonna have your own water bill. Okay, what else does everybody need? I bet you everybody in this room has one. Phone, how much does it cost for a cell phone? Anybody in here paying for their own cell phone bill? Everybody else on mom and dad's? I mean mom and dad. God bless mom and dad. Okay, those of you paying for your own, how much you paying? I pay 80. You pay 80. Good. Somebody else had one. Sorry? If you have a data plan, it's like 120. It was 120. So you have like a, you have a smartphone? Mm -hmm. You have a smartphone too? That makes a big difference. You can actually, for my purposes, we're going to say 75 because like I said, I'm thrifty and I shop a whole lot. That really doesn't matter if you share. Actually, I should just put my, put my little raccoon friend up there so I don't have to do that again. Oh. Okay, so what else? When you're in your house, what do you need? What's all, what else is really important? Cable. Cable, cable and internet. internet. How much does it cost for cable and internet? We can't live without TV and we for sure can't live without computers. Any idea? What's it cost? 50. 100. My bill came in 154. 115? 115 over here. 
Comcast. Comcast. <laughs> Switch to Verizon. No. It's about, eight, you can do it for about 80 bucks. Depends, of course, on how many channels you get, if you have HD, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm thrifty, remember, so you're not getting HD with me. Sorry. Go to, go to the bar to watch those football games. Okay, you need to get to work. How are you getting to work? We talked about this a little bit. Sorry? A car. A car? Is a car a necessity? How else can you get to work? Bus. Bus? Train? Be. It depends on where you work. Uh, my son has a friend who lives in the apartment over his place of employment. He saves time, he saves money. Car payments, okay. How much do you think you should spend for a car? Just, you know, what do you, what do you think? You're gonna go out and buy a car, what do you think you're gonna spend? 200 bucks. Well, let's talk the big number. What's the, what, how much are you gonna pay for a car? $10,000. $10,000, what kind of car are you gonna get for $10,000? Because Alice is already chewing your ear about a used car. How many people in here want to buy a new car when they graduate? Forget that Alice said anything. How many people think they deserve a new car when they graduate? How much do you think a new car should cost? Zach was just telling me that he, when he came to SEI for a recruiting purpose, you know, was the yeah. associate thing. There was a, a Villanova kid who came in a, in a brand new Mercedes SUV. He didn't come back. My associate. Uh, Oh, ask them if they, they want to adopt me. <laughs> um, okay, so we have an associate who works with us who was kind enough to one of the ones who gave me some numbers, and she bought a Jetta. How much do you think a Jetta costs? A Volkswagen Jetta. Mm -hmm. Sorry? Very good. Have you been shopping? My aunt just bought. See, that's good. Okay, so car. If we buy a Jetta. And I'm, and I'm using these as examples because these are real, the numbers I'm using are numbers I got for people who were paying these numbers. I got this number for a car payment, I had as high as $450 a month. The average number I got was 300. That's based on an $18,000 car, you negotiate it for 0% interest and you're gonna pay for it for five years. No one should pay for a car for five years. Because by the time five years comes, you're paying repair bills and a car payment, right? Okay, what else do you need? Do you have a car? What else do you need for the car? Insurance. Insurance, you need car insurance. Anybody know how much that costs? Single person driving a car. 600 for six months. 600 for six months, you're good, close. About 120. <laughs> yeah, and that's of course on the premise that you're, you know, good student discounts, blah, 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 blah. You might do a little better because you're female. I'm using average numbers, so you might do a little better because girls pay less because we're all more responsible. Okay, what else? You need something else for your car? Gas. gas. Anybody looked at the price of gas lately? It's painful, huh? Yeah, three bucks. It's going up. It's like it's right at three bucks. So I'm just going to give you this. I'm, yeah, Anybody in here spending monthly gas numbers? You're probably not all commuting, so what are you spending? Do you know? A month? Yeah. But you're staying here for school most of the time, right? So you're not actually leaving a lot? No, I would go to Philly over the weekends, but mostly around. Okay. About 40 a week. About 40 a week? Mm -hmm. um, based on um, a, a car that has 12 gallons of gas at $3 a piece, and I just based it on a, a fill up and a half a, a week, because you're commuting back and forth to work and you're gonna go out on the weekends, right? So that's $54 a week, which you're saying about 40 now. So adding, now you're commuting to work maybe a little times four weeks, 216 bucks for gas. Okay, what else? What's one of the first things you said you need to spend money on? Food. food. How much do you think you spend on food? This is the number one item everyone's wrong on. Anybody have a clue? Is anybody not eating like on the door plane? Anybody feeding themselves? Do you have any idea how much money you're spending on food? 15 a day. 15 a day? There's, there's first clue. You don't know how much you're spending, right? That's the problem. Because at the end of the week, you're going to go, where's all my money? And you don't even know what you spend it on. So we'll get to that in a second. I'm going to give you $50 a week. All right, which works out to $200 a month. And I, it is really easy to spend more than that. 
really easy. So remember, I'm thrifty. So I go to the cheap grocery stores and I bargain shop and I do all that kind of stuff. Okay, so entertainment. How much do you think you guys spend when you go out? Anybody have a clue? One really good night out. You went downtown, doing the clubs. Even though you're not 21, I'm sure you're sneaking in somewhere. Forty. Forty dollars a week? Forty dollars a night. <laughs> okay. So if you spend forty dollars a night, you go out too. That's you know, you're that's eighty dollars a weekend, right? All right. Well, I'm gonna say you're all good students, so you're not allowed to go out more than one night a week. So we'll give you 160 bucks to go out on. All right. Um, that nasty student loan. Uh, average college, uh, wow, where's my number? I don't think I have them on this particular sheet. Um, I do not. Any idea what most people spend a month on a student loan? How many of you said you had loans? Just a couple. Just a couple? So this is a big tick, this is a big thing for you guys and appreciate the fact that you do not have student loans because that is really unusual. Really, really unusual. My nephew just graduated from Loyola, $80,000 of student loan debt with a business degree. So, student loan, they will let you pay as little as like $45 a month today. But 20 years from now, you're gonna be paying 60, 600, 700, $800 a month. People get sucked into, I'll pay $45 now because I'll be making boatloads of money then. That's a really big assumption. Because if the people who did that, who were paying $800 a month on a student loan three years ago, what do you think happened to them when the financial world came crumbling down? So we're going to be conservative and make it 200 I had a lot of people paying four or $500 a month for student loans. How many years do you pay a student? 20 years. 20 years. They start you out at 20 years. So they'll be 41 years old. You do not have to pay it for 20 years, but they, yeah, they give you 20 years. Okay, let's do one more, and then we'll kind of total up where we are. Who said they had credit cards? Okay. The vast majority of college graduates, graduates have a credit card when they graduate. The average credit card debt for a college graduate in 2008, as I said, probably more now, was uh, $4,138. Average interest rate today is 14.78%. Uh, because you're young, you're not getting those good, you know, great 5% deals. It's not how it works. You got to pay. You got to pay to get good credit. If you put no more debt on that credit card when you get out of college, and the chance of that is about zero, unless you all take this really much to heart, uh, it will take you five years. No, sorry, two years at two hundred dollars a month to get rid of that debt. So that's two years you have to spend two hundred dollars of every paycheck just to get rid of the stuff that you did in college that you can't even remember what you spent it on. Okay, anybody? Want to guess how we're doing with our income here? I was going to add up as we go, but it's too hard to talk and add sometimes. So you have your own one bedroom apartment. Not only are you out of money, you don't have enough money to pay for those things. If you share an apartment and you're over here, you're sharing a townhouse, you have an extra $97 to spend a month. Now, if you are lucky enough to get a $40,000 a year job, you actually, you'll have more money. And you're over here, you'll actually have $400 a month. But, so what did we not include? Savings. Savings. Okay, I'm not even gonna put a, I'm not even gonna put a number on savings because that's a however there are many and the Catholic Church would tell you this that believe in tithing, which means ten percent off the top. So ten percent of your income should go to savings. Now, I will tell you the ten percent of your income should go to savings either sorry, tithe that's not savings. Tithing is ten percent goes to giving. The other ten percent goes to savings. Savings can be in a couple different places. Where can you put your savings? I'm saving for a new car, that's savings. Investments. Investments, so you're retired, well there's investments and there's retirement investments, right? Anybody in here thinking about retirement? I am. 
Um, let me just stop for one second. I wanted, nope, that's not it, sorry. On the back of my cartoon here, you have one example. And I put them on every other chair so you guys can share. And I have extras if you didn't get one, you want to take it. This is Ben and Arthur. Ben started saving $2,000 when he was 19. He saved for 10, he saved for, he saved from 19 to 26 and then he stopped. Arthur said, I just got out of school, I'm not going to do that. And he doesn't start saving until he's 27. When he starts when, when Ben stops. Arthur never stops investing. Now this is based on 12%, and you're all, I'm sure you all roll your eyes going, who's going to get 12%? But there was a time you could get 12%, um, and I have more recent numbers, but this will give you the picture. Um, Arthur never caught up because he didn't start younger. Never caught up. So my advice to you is don't think I have tomorrow. Just start doing it today. The other reason is besides this, which is very obvious, there's a big, big difference in numbers, is a really, it's a habit. If it becomes a habit, then you don't even think about it. And the one, if you get nothing else out of this, besides, well, there's a bunch of stuff I want you to get out of this, but your very first job, when you go to sign up, if they have a 401k plan, you say, take 10% out of my very first paycheck. And you're gonna say, I can't do that, you just went through that whole thing and I need all that money, right? But if you take 10% out of your first paycheck and it immediately goes into their 401k, or if you got put into an IRA, if you're not working in a place that has a 401k, you don't know what that paycheck is going to be because you never got it. And if you do that from your very first paycheck, you will never ever feel it. And you won't feel deprived because you never had it. And if you keep that up as long as you work, you won't have to worry about anything else as long as you don't go into massive debt. So that's my biggest piece of advice to you is start that immediately. Okay, savings. What else are we missing? Savings is an unknown number, but that's, a, that's important. We're running out of time, so just throw out some stuff. What else do we spend money on? We talked about some. Blow money. Blow money. Okay, what else? Emergency. Emergency. You guys were listening, that's good. What else? Insurance. Insurance. Both medical, right? Medical, dental, and? Renters. Renters, yep. What else? Gym's not free once you leave college, right? I'm the only one in my house that's allowed to go to the gym. It costs me $95 a month. It costs me $95 a month to not have a heart attack. Um, cars. We talked about car, the car, the car payment, right? The insurance, the gas. What about registration, oil, tires, that, 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 right? Not to mention a little air freshener and the cool stuff you got to get in the car when you get a new car. Uh, what else? Huh? Clothes? So she said, yeah, you need clothes, right? I got a new job. I can't wear can't wear my pajama pants to my new job, right? What else? If you have clothes, what do you have to do with them? Dry cleaning. Note to self: avoid clothes that need dry cleaning. It's one light item you don't have to have on your bill. I mean, on your budget. What else we talk about? Salons. Whatever you do in the salon. What else? Weddings, weddings, gifts, right? And when we go to a wedding, they're never in our backyard, right? So we've got travel, whether it's for the weddings, or if it's for vacations, or if it's for going home, right? Oh, gotta go back to Villanova, because we're having a reunion, right? Gotta see all my girlfriends, what else? This is savings and retirement. Those are two different things, right? This is, this is long-term, put away, you're never touching it forever. This is, I'm saving for a car, for a house, to pay for those Jimmy Choo shoes that I want, that I, because I really, really want them, right? Um, we talked about giving, which I did not write down. Um, besides insurance, you do actually have to pay the doctor when you go, right? It's not free, I wish that were the case. Um, on our other page, we had furniture, right? We had furniture, we had appliances. If we have fur things, they're not free either, right? Anybody ever had a pet with a big vet bill? Big surprise, wasn't it? And how am I gonna pay for my for muffins here who doesn't deserve, you know, I can't pay for cancer treatments. Um, oh, one other thing, if you're in the townhouse, surprise, surprise, you have to pay someone to come get your pet, your trash. 
$22 a month where I live to get your trash picked up. But if you live in Ryder Township, they'll pay for it. But of course, they'll pay more in Ryder Township. Um, if you add all those things in on my initial thing back here, based on my numbers, you're at negative $900. So why am I depressing you? Because you don't have to spend all those numbers. Because you have options. When we started out, I said you can have anything you want, you just can't have everything. Right? So my advice is to make choices. Make sound choices, make choices you think about. The only way you can do that is if you know where your money's going, right? And if you think about what's important to me. So if the Jimmy Choo shoes are really important to you, that's fine, but you can't get your hair done and your nails done and buy, you know, a $300 suit. You can have, you, can have, you know, drop dead shoes, but you gotta figure it out somewhere else. Where's the money gonna come from? That's the whole point of having a budget. So you're telling your money where to go instead of wondering where it went. And if you're going to take money for the shoes over here, it's got to come from somewhere else. So it means you're going to not spend money on something else. So Sue, are you suggesting that they keep track of everything they spend? Well, and make a plan, or just kind of wing it? Um, that is, oh, sorry, that is exactly the reason why I gave you an index card, because this is my, this is my challenge to you for the next week, the next month. You pick. Try for a week. If you do it for a month, it's even better. Write down every single penny you spend. I mean, literally every penny. If you put a quarter in the parking meter, write it down. If you buy a latte and you spend 450, write it down. If you get your hair done, write down what you paid for your hair, write down the tip, right? If you go out and you left a dollar on the bar for the bartender, write it down. Is it a pain in the backside? Yeah, but you get used to it. But I guarantee you, and, and if you want you, the, the easiest way is just have an index card and just do one for every day. Go on, just write it down. Don't even think about it. Just write it down. It's like being on a diet. You don't want to think about it at first because you don't know what you're doing right or wrong. Write it down. Throw it in the drawer. At the end of the week, sit down. Add them all up. And you will find out. And you're going to have, a, you're going to have an epiphany. And I'll tell you my personal story. I thought I was being thrifty. I liked yard sale just because it's fun. It's the thrill of the chase. Not that I need anything. I just because it's fun. So I, and my kid, when my kids are little, I would get a lot of stuff for my kids at yard sales. So I start doing this. I think I'm being really thrifty. And I come home at the end. So and I'm writing it all down. And I came home and I sat down and I went, I spent $65 yard sale. That's ridiculous. You don't go to yard sales to spend $65, but you think, oh, it's a quarter, it's a dollar, it's a, you know, it's a buck 50, it's 75 cents. It doesn't really matter. What matters is how much money did you spend? And what did you spend it on? Okay, so um, we will quickly, we'll quickly wrap, wrap up and we'll tell you the answer to the, to the quiz. Oh. Oh. oh, so here's some quick, advice from some of uh, Sue's clients. My the, favorite one is the one on the bottom right. Don't assume you're going to get raises. Live within your means now. And I think Sue mentioned the trap a lot of people fall into with their student loans is that they assume later it's going to be good. Now all you have to do is talk to graduates from 2007 and 2008 and you'll find out that um, they were on the trajectory for their career and they fell off the trajectory. So be reasonable now. Don't become house poor. Sue talks about that. Get a roommate in the beginning. Um, don't charge things. Uh, start planning for retirement now. And I think the, the example you gave was a really good one. Um, here's level setting about comp. Sue talks a, talked a little bit about comp. Um, and I love this top one, Sue. Where did you get that information from? Uh, I get a bajillion yeah. emails, newsletters, whatever, mm -hmm. and they all, and they so they go out and read everything else, and then just put them in a nice little thing that I steal from. Mm -hmm. um, MSN is quoted all the time. They they have there's a couple of them that have really USA Today. There's a, um, Michelle Singletary, the Washington Post has great website material. So expectations are important. And then finally, Sue. Okay. Yep. Um, tell your money where to go, uh, and that's the whole point of a budget. Okay. It's your money, and I know how hard you work for your money. So why would you want to waste it, right? Why would you want to waste it? Make choices that are right for you. Jimmy Choo's shoes are never going to be right for me, okay? But my kids' college, my kids' education, I put my daughter in private school this year. Very painful because I live in a very expensive school district on purpose. But I made that choice, and I could make that choice because I knew where my money was, and so I could move things and say, okay, we can do that. And it was a really good decision, and she's getting straight A's, and she's really happy. But I couldn't have done that if I wasn't paying attention. Uh, avoid debt like the play. There is nothing. I will tell you, I had. I can't tell you how many adults I have had sitting in my classes in tears, in tears. And I have been there too, that's why I teach this class. 
I have bills all over the floor, and I'm in tears because I don't know which one to pay because I don't have enough money. I don't have enough money to pay all of them. How do I pick? How do I pick? So if you're not in debt, you don't have that problem. And especially credit card debt where you're paying for stuff that you don't even remember what, you don't even remember what you paid. And if it's food, that's the worst. You ate it 24 hours, it's gone, and you're paying for it three years from now, bad decision. Track your spending. I guarantee you, take the index card. That's my challenge to you. Um, use cash. If you have a credit card, don't use it, put it away. Hide it. Put it in a, in a, in a can, fill it with water, put it in the freezer. If you need it, you'll have to think about it because it has to melt, but you can get to it. But you don't need it. Find ways to spend less. We're going to talk about that really fast at the end here. And start saving now. I don't care if it's 10 cents. I don't care if it's a dollar. I don't care if it's five. Every paycheck you get, every amount of money you get, hide some somewhere because it's a habit. And if you make it a habit, you make it important, then you don't have to say that. Okay. For my final oh, sorry, words, I, I, I realized that we were at a, a, a fine Catholic uh, university, so I, I looked back at my own uh, personal family archives, and I pulled up the Talmud, which is a Jewish text of those of you who are taking uh, comparative religion. And I love this quote. This is a real quote from an ancient religious text. And it says, you can judge a person based on three things. And if you think about it, this is absolutely true. How he behaves when he's drunk, or she behaves when she's drunk, right? This is, this is how you judge virtue how someone behaves when they're angry, and how they handle money. So that's something to think about. Those are my final words. And then Sue, and then Sue um, we've got some things. We, we want to give away two books. So we're going to give away the top two books. But I need to know whose birthday is the closest to today. Any November birthdays? December? Ooh, happy birthday. OK, that's one. All right, what's our other one? Anyone? Anyway, one. Are you closer than December 21st? No. no Anyone sorry. closer than December 21st? Okay. No. Okay. Well, you get your everything out your college book. Thank you. And one more. What was another one? Are they on there? Did we put them no, on? No, no, no. Who's paying for college with no help from their family? I don't think we're going to get there with anybody. Yeah, no, okay. um, who already has a job offer? Did you accept it? You did? Good. <laughs> we're going to give you the quarter life crisis. <laughs> so you need that. Yeah, that's good. Okay, now we're really quickly going to play that and finish off my game. Okay, so I think you can flip. I think they'll come to the first one. So no, I'm sorry, the computer. Okay, I think and I think the uh, price is right. So here's the first one. Anybody want to guess how much does this table cost? Come on, just guess. Two hundred, seven hundred. Okay, the only one I could find online was on eBay. eBay was three twenty nine. I paid twenty five dollars. Brand new table at a moving sale. Woman decided to get married. Moved to California. He had all the stuff. It's all about being in the right place at the right time. Oh, so sorry, I forgot to take out my mom mom's jeans. jeans. Oh. I had a, I had a, I'm like, I was going for a name brand. Skip the, sorry about that. Skip okay. that. Okay, my leather pants. This is the cheapest ones I could find were $349. Anybody want to guess how much I paid for mine? Survey said? A dollar. I paid a dollar for them in a consignment shop. It was end of the season day. There was a skank young woman in them when you bought them. No, it's not. It's not. But the thing is, see, people are afraid to buy leather pants because they're, you know, because they're expensive to clean. I paid a dollar for them. What do I care? Okay, Doncaster. This is the very fancy uh, website. Um, Four hundred dollars for this jacket. Four hundred dollars. I paid five dollars. And I'm friends with a woman who sells this for a living, and she's having a heart attack. And I have three Doncaster jackets. Um, what was my other one? The glass, champagne glass. Oh, the champagne glass, yes. Yeah. So, Galway Crystal, anybody I have an idea what it costs? 50? I went home after I bought this glass and I went home and looked. It was $75 and I paid 25 cents. And it matches my waterproof. <laughs> it, match, yeah. it matches my waterproof. And I got that at a yard sale, stuck right in the middle of all the Flintstone jelly glasses. So, um, the point you. is, you can have nice clothes. You just have to be smart about how you find it. You don't have to go yard sailing, although I highly recommend it. Um, and you don't have to go to consignment shops, but I highly recommend that too, especially here. The consignment shops around Villanova are awesome because you live in a very wealthy neighborhood. You go to the Bryn Mawr Hospital thrift shop, my husband's bought every tuxedo he's ever owned from the thrift shop over there. Chestnut Hill also has very yes. good ones, and um, so does Manny. Yeah. So, um, cards are up here. If you guys have questions, if you want to take a card, you can email us, whatever. Um, thank you for your attention and hope we didn't scare you too much.